I have had the Fire Maple Maverick three-sided wood stove for quite some time now, and I think I'm ready to give you my thoughts on it. If you're interested, keep watching. Before we begin, I just want to thank Fire Maple for sending me this wood stove so that I could share it with you. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about its dimensions and the like. I'll give them to you, but of course I'll put everything in the video description below. So really what I want to do today is show you how the stove goes together. I'll build a fire in it and we'll talk about some of my thoughts on it in terms of alternative fuels and its durability, etc. All right, let's get started. So here is the stove in the package that it arrived in. It's a rather nicely made uh, Kadura type nylon and well finished around the edges for durability. And what I really like is that it's rubberized on the inside. So not only durable, but it should be easy to keep clean as well. So the, the package is divided into two sections, a front and a back. And in the back is where you keep the primary components for the stove. And in the front, there's where some accessories are for the stove, including a few that I added. And I'll show you this right off of the top. This is the uh, instructions. It's all pictorial. It's pretty easy to figure out anyway, but it's nice to have that just in case things aren't going together the way you think. Um, let me just show you the accessories that it has or that I included with this only because uh, I want to be able to move on to the assembly. So this is the included triangular pot stand. I'll show you how that goes on in a moment. I have been using it, and but I have a few comments. It's not my favorite, but I'll explain why. This is just a metal plate that I had in my collection at home. This is uh, I'm using for covering over the feed port to allow it to work better with charcoal. Again, I'll demonstrate that. So let me put those aside, get out the three primary components. So just stuck down aside a little bit. Is the other one still in there? Yeah, all right, so let me put the, pa actually I'll use the package to keep my knees from getting dirty. So the three pr primary components or the three sides, are, as you can see, I've got them packed together dirty, not my usual way of doing things, but I, I didn't, I was only out yesterday and I used this and I did not clean it like I normally would when I get home, but all right, let's go with it. All right, so it goes together through a series of tabs and slots. So each side is very much identical, except of course, the one that has the feed port on it. On each of these, there are slots, as you can see here. And on the other plate, there are tabs that slide into the slots. And it goes together quite easily, at least the three, first three. It's the last corner that usually uh, takes a little bit more effort. So you can see I've got two together. I'm trying to make sure that you can see everything that I'm doing. Slide the next one in. All right, so that's three sides together. And to get the last side together, when you bring those corners over, you do have to kind of bend it ever so slightly to get the tabs to slide into the slots. And that's it. All right, so there's my three sides all put together, but you notice there's no bottom. So the bottom, this is different, all right? This is really different. I am getting good and dirty here. That's the bottom plate, the fire grate itself. And, and I know how different it looks. You'll notice there's a hole in it, and that's so that I can do exactly what I'm doing now, which is to use my finger to help me guide it into place. Then there are two large tabs, and that would go in slots that are on the bottom of all three sides. So really doesn't matter which way you start this in terms of lining it up with any one of the three sides. I tend to line those up with the front. And I'll see if I can show you this in operation. So to do this, you would reach inside, find the two slots, and you can see them now protruding out here at the bottom, and then slide it forward a little bit. Sometimes a little bit of rattling or shaking to get it into place, but then it does. Now you can see what the fire grate looks inside on the base. The grate is sitting about an inch and a quarter off of the ground, um, but if you'll notice, there is no uh, ash pan in the bottom. So it's important to remember that wherever you set this up, that it's a fire safe surface. Today I'm in, actually in a swamp and the ground here is very, very wet. Even so, I did clear it down to as, uh, the, as clear a ground as I could get. So uh, I do carry things that I can put under this. So just keep that in mind. If you're going to set this up, that you're sure of what it is you're setting it up on. All right, so I'm gonna put this down on the ground and uh, this is all there is to it to, to put it together and we'll get a fire started. All right, we're all set up on the ground. You can see it's nice damp forest floor that I've buried out to the earth as best I could. 
And uh, yeah, let's get this fire started. So what I'll do is I'll work on getting the fire started. And as I do, I'll discuss my thoughts on it because uh, what I'm doing is actually just bringing some water to a boil so I can have myself my first cup of coffee of the day in the woods. Um, I just want to show you this as I do. This is something else I'm testing out. This is called Combustion Kit. It is a small cottage industry down in the U.S. Everything is made by uh, or from recycled materials by one individual, a young lady who is a university student. She's actually making and selling these to help her go through school. So uh, I was quite intrigued by that. I picked up a, a small kit, a small assortment of her different fire starters. And this is the first time I'm trying this one out. This is kind of cool. Look at it. You can probably tell what it is. It's a big wooden bead that she has impregnated with uh, probably wax and oil. I can't tell. As Then there's some hemp rope that's twisted through it. And and heavily waxed so uh, yeah it, the bead should act a little bit like fat wood I wouldn't think it'd be quite the same but something similar so this is a kind of a cool little product and I have there's a few other things that she does have but I'll do a more complete review and give you her information actually I'll put the link to her information in the video description if you are interested all right let's get this started I have not used these before but uh, I'd say that lit up plenty easy I think I want to, uh, before I start adding too much to it, I just want to make sure it's going to get going. I think I've got a bit more than I need to get this uh, initial fire going. I'll tell you it's a slow burn on that right now because of the waxed uh, jute or hemp that she's using. I'm not sure which. And this product, but uh, let's see if I just can't get this started here. There's my f initial little bundle, and that'll flame up regardless. I think you could do that with a bare match. Well, you could do it with a bare match. And my splits to start off are pine, and they're actually a little bit bigger, but they're so dry, I have no doubt that they're going to light up. Actually, I have a, do have a couple smaller pieces of wood here. And these are maple. And being in a swamp, when you pick branches up off of the ground, they may feel dry, but that's no guarantee, right? So, All right, well, I'm just, uh, before I start putting on any heavier fuel, I just want to start talking about this. So the design of this stove in a triangular format is kind of interesting. Smaller at the bottom than it is at the top. I'll give you the, the measurements right on the video here and, of course, in the video description below. But uh, it's somewhere about 11 inches in this direction and about 9 inches across the bottom. And they say 5.5 inches, but I'm going to remeasure that because I think it's higher than that from uh, bottom to the top. All right, now I can get a few more pieces in. Yeah, a couple small pieces, a couple bigger pieces. Airflow is very good. Uh, being wider at the top than it is at the bottom doesn't really concentrate the airflow the way a rocket stove would or even stoves like the Emberlet or even the Firebox for that matter where they're, uh, they're a little taller than they are wide so that causes more of a chimney effect. In this case, this stove is more like a grill or fire pit is the best way to look at it. Uh, yeah, I think a fire pit is one of the best ways to consider this so that you have a good amount of open surface area that you can throw wood in and, um, you know, even grill on. Like you can grill a big steak on that. I'm thinking you could put four or five hamburgers on that. Well, depending on how big they are, of course. Sausages, half a dozen sausages on that with a grate of some time, a grill on top of it. But yeah, this is, this is really a small fire pit and it's nice to use the way I'm using it now. But um, as this fire gets going and I go to put my, my kettle on, I'll uh, show you what I mean about, uh, well, some of my thoughts on it. So here's one thing right off the top as the fire catches on is look how big this port is, this fire port is. There are pluses and minuses to that. There is lots of airflow. There's no question about it. Um, you can feed in nice long sticks like I will with that one in a moment's time. I find that it's quite easy for things to fall out. So maybe the hole is a little bit bigger than it needs to be for this stove. Just the same, it's uh, 
it hasn't caused me a problem. I do have to be careful about what's out front here. So, you know, you just make sure again what your surface is that you're using it on. That hole is obviously too big to use with charcoal, but that's where that little plate comes in. Now, the plate would slide in, cover that hole, and then I can, uh, uh, well, don't have to worry about charcoal uh, falling out of it. All right, so my fire is catching on nicely now. What I'm going to do is I'll come back in a few moments' time when my fire is fully established and the wood is settled in, and then I'll put my kettle on and we'll have a few more thoughts. All right, my uh, fire is doing all right. You can see it's not a raging fire by any means. It's uh, just a nice controlled fire. It's not the hottest fire in the world, but again, just a nice little fire pit, I think is the best way to describe this. Let me show you how, if you have a longer piece of wood, you can kind of slide it up inside like that. It is a bit of an angle, but uh, once the fire burns down a little lower than it is now, it's not so much of a chore to, to get it in there and have it stay where you want it to stay. Okay, so, now, in order to suspend my pot over this, this is what is provided by Fire Maple for doing so. And the way this works, I think I can show you right here, there, there is a series of crenellations or little uh, lifted areas all along the edge, and it's the same for all three sides. The center one right here is, the, is intended to hold this corner of the, of the uh, triangle piece. Uh, in theory, it does work, and there's, again, of course, one on each, all three sides. In theory, it does work. The only problem is, is that I find that as the fire heats up, if I don't have this on when I initially burn the fire or initially light it, and I usually do like loading it from the top, if I don't have it on before I get the fire lit, there's a good chance I'm not getting it on. And that's not just because it's hot, but because the sides do move. They do move outward and warp, and I cannot hook this on all three of those spots at the same time. So uh, I was a little disappointed by that and because I thought, okay, the stove is warping, and you know, stoves with long sides like that do have a tendency to warp. However, when every time, this is the true of every burn that I've had in this, as soon as it cools down, for whatever reason, the sides come back into true and they lay perfectly flat on each other. It's just as the fire is hot that they move out at the top. So, uh, yeah, I don't find this especially useful unless you put it on before you get the fire starting. So if, you know, if that's your style of burning a fire, putting this on, then building the fire through there, it'll work for you. If it's my style, I like to load it from the top. So what's the alternative? And a few people had suggested this in that earlier video. It's some type of, some type of a grate like this. Uh, this is a grate that I had picked up at the thrift store. And, uh, it, you know, it's fine. Like you can, uh, any size grate that'll span the top will work. And I like this one because this will also fit inside the package with the other components of the stove if I want to use it. So that does fit right over. It's suspended on at least two sides well enough. Depends on where you want to put it. If the, I was down to coals, I could use it for grilling, but right now I'm going to use it to put my kettle on so that I can make myself a cup of coffee. So uh, there's one of the nice things about the stove, right, is that there's so much opening on the top is that when you put a kettle on, it's not dampening down the fire. It's not causing it to cool off too much. It's not causing a lot of smoke. There is smoke coming. I'm, yes, that's true. That's coming off the sides of my kettle because it's quite heavily resined up from the last number of fires. By the way, that is the Fire Maple 1 point, or one liter kettle that I'm testing and will be reviewing soon. So stay tuned for that. But nice little fire pit. Again, nice little fire pit. That's the way I like to look at this with a wide open space. So if you like cooking when you're in the woods, cooking meaning grilling or, or anything that requires a much larger surface area for a pan like this will certainly support a cast iron uh, pan. You know, I would think uh, you could use a 10 inch pan on that with ease and uh, it would support it. It's definitely strong enough for that. Uh, yeah, so that's probably the best way to look at it is like a fire pit. Now, I guess the other alternative is if I had wanted to do so is I could have made a tripod and suspended the pot down that way and then built the fire up as high as I wanted to. Okay, I don't know that there's much more to say about this stove right now. What I'm going to do is make myself my coffee and then we'll close the video out with a few pros and cons and closing thoughts. Nice cup of coffee. All right, before we get started, bonus points, if you can tell me what it is that I'm using to drink my coffee from. Okay, so let's uh, 
close this video with some pros and cons and some closing thoughts. And uh, one of the things that I had mentioned during the uh, video was that this is actually a better fire pit than it is a wood stove. And, and I don't think that's the best way to describe it. It is a crossover between a wood stove and a true fire pit. It carries characteristics of each and serves both of them very well but doesn't do both of them as well as a respective wood stove and a fire pit go. And I know some people are going, well, what's the difference? I have a good number of wood stoves and I have a good number of fire pits. And wood stoves are, excel at burning wood, usually at very high heat, very intensely, and can be used to grill over, but not as good as a grill. All right. The other side of it is a grilling or fire pit quite often has a much wider opening on the top of it, meaning a less intense fire, but one that is better suited for cooking over, usually because the coals will last longer, they won't burn through so quickly, they can be used to grill meats over or have a more controlled heat for whatever other type of cooking that you want to do, and they act as a fire pit that if you just want the aesthetic of having a nice open fire. Small wood stoves don't do that so well. I mean, they have fire in them, but that's not the same as something you can just throw sticks in to add to it. Uh, yeah, so grills or fire pits, and I'm kind of lumping them together, serve a slightly different function than the average wood stove. So what this does is crosses over between the two of them, giving you some of the best features of each, but not all of them. As you saw, the fire is not as intense in this as it would be, say, in my firebox stove or any of my rocket stoves or any of the wood gas stoves, but a controlled burn that I can use for cooking over. That's the best, that's the thing about it. Now, if you're cooking over some type of a heat and you're looking for a controlled burn, nothing beats charcoal. And I know a lot of people aren't going to carry charcoal out into the woods when there's woods out here, but maybe you have it at home, maybe you have it at your campground, and maybe you just do want to bring charcoal out. I bring it out during the summer when we're under a fire ban because, believe it or not, we can still use charcoal. So it is a realistic fuel to carry for me during the summer. So it works really well with wood, it works really well with charcoal, provided you, you put some type of a piece of metal in to cover open that rather large feed port on the side. What it doesn't do well though, is I cannot see how to use this with wood pellets without some quite uh, serious modifications to it. And the reason I mention that is, as you know, the more fuels that I can burn in a stove, the more multi-use it is, the more versatile the stove is. Well, this stove would could probably be made to use wood pellets in, but I don't think it would be a good stove for that. Wood pellets like a taller chamber with more airflow coming from underneath. So this, even if I did modify this for wood pellets, I don't think it would be a good one for using wood pellets with. And the other thing you'd like to use your wood stove for, if you can, is to add an alcohol stove to it. And why would you do that? Of course, if it's really wet out, like raining, or you're just stopping for a few minutes to make a cup of tea and you don't want to go through the work of finding and processing a whole lot of sticks or the sticks is all wet, the ones on the ground, um, just pulling out your, wood, your alcohol stove and placing it inside your wood stove is a nice multi-use, makes the stove more versatile. Uh, it's not necessary, but it's just a nice plus. Again, without doing some quite serious modification to the stove, I don't know how I could do that easily anyway. I think if I drilled some holes and put some rods across, it could be done, but I don't think that's necessary because here's what you can do. As long as your pot's not too big, I certainly could do that with that uh, fire maple kettle, is set my alcohol stove down on the fire grate and if it's one that supports a pot directly or has a pot stand itself, then put my kettle in on top of that. Uh, what I've done is I've used the stove itself as a windscreen. So that's another way of looking at it. You can use this fire pit style stove as a windscreen. Now, one more thing I tried just to see if it would work because I was looking at it and I thought this would be cool is before I put the fire grate in it one day, I flipped it upside down. So now we have a triangle narrowing at the top and I burnt wood in it that way and it does work. I don't know that there's any real advantage to doing it, and there, there's actually a couple of disadvantages. You get a much smaller opening at the top, 
So when the fire started, it was focused and forced up through that at, uh, uh, smaller opening, and I got a much more intense, almost rocket stove-like effect. It was chimney effect was taking place, and it was bringing the fire up through. Uh, downside was, of course, is that there is no fire grate in the bottom, so I had to make sure it was on a fire-safe surface to do this. And the other thing was is that as I continued to feed wood in it, uh, as the coals built up, it started to choke itself off from air. So for a quick hot fire, it's doable, but you're not, it's, not gonna, it's not sustainable, if that makes sense. So it was kind of a, an interesting thing to do, and if you own one of these stoves, give it a try and see whether or not you like doing it. Again, I could probably turn it into more of a stove if I wanted to build a fire grate into it, but sometimes you can just do too much in way of modification to a stove to make it do everything when there are actually better stoves you can buy or make yourself that will do them even better. Leave this for what it is, a crossover between a wood stove and a fire pit, and I think you'll be happy with it. Okay, uh, as I mentioned, all the, uh, mater all the information I have, I'll be putting in the video description, as well as the links to where you can purchase it. If you have any experience with the stove or any questions that you want to leave me, please put them in the comment section below. But you'll see this in action again because I'm using it with all my fire maple products that I'm testing and reviewing. Makes sense to use both of them at the same time. So you'll see it in action again soon. All right, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.